What's up guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So today we are going to be breaking down the Extreme Z Awakening details for LR Kale and Khalifla, once considered to be the undisputed best unit in the entire game. I believe for about a year from their release, they were super, super broken. And obviously in recent times, they've fallen off a little bit, but still very good, still very usable. And in this video, we're going to find out how much better this uh, EZA makes them. Now, for comparison purposes, we'll start with the pre-EZA details. So here we go. Their leader skill without the Extreme Z Awakening is Joint Forces Category Q plus 4, HP Attack and Defense plus 130%. Or Super AGL types, key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 100%. For their 12 key super attack, it raises defense and causes colossal damage. And then 18 key raises defense and causes mega colossal damage. Passive attack and defense plus 66% and launches an additional attack. Key plus 1 up to 6 and chance of evading enemies attacks, including super attacks, plus 6% up to 66% with each attack performed. And then attack plus 10% per universe 6 joint forces or pure Saiyans category ally on the team and launches an additional super attack when there is a universe survival saga or pure Saiyans category enemy. So a big part of the reason why this unit was considered so busted, uh, you know, back in the day was because they could launch so many attacks, right? I mean, if you're facing a universe survival saga or pure Saiyans enemy, or in some cases both, then they're launching up to like four super attacks and they're stacking defense with every super. They're also building dodge chance up to 66%, which is basically a great chance to dodge. So in longer events, they were getting super, super tanky. And as far as the damage output goes, I mean, it's not crazy. Like each super wasn't hitting super, super hard, I guess. But uh, with so many super attacks, they were still dealing a very respectable amount of damage, right? So that is the Killing Khalifla on release. Now popping over to the Extreme Z Awakening details, leader skill is now Join Forces Category Key Plus 4, HP Attack and Defense plus 150%, which is a 20% increase from before, and then uh, Super AGL Types Key Plus 4, HP Attack and Defense plus 100%, which is exactly the same so that actually does not change and then the new 12 key super attack raises defense raises attack for one turn that's new and causes colossal damage and then the 18 key super raises defense causes mega colossal damage and lowers attack so that's also a new effect right there and the new passive is Q plus 3 and attack and defense plus 130% before it was just attack and defense plus 66% so now we're getting an additional 64% attack and defense and also the additional key will make it easier to launch 18 key supers right and then launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack now keep in mind before it was just launches an additional attack now we have a high chance for that attack to become a super attack and then plus an additional attack and defense plus 66 percent and launches an additional attack that has a great chance of becoming a super attack when hp is 66 percent or less so this was the part of the new passive that i saw a lot of people having issues with because while it's amazing like 66 percent attack and defense is a lot and also the 70% uh, chance for an additional super attack on top of, you know, this additional super is amazing, but it's locked behind a pretty uh, significant HP restriction. I mean, it's not the worst we've seen. 66% HP is not like super low, but it's pretty low. It's pretty low and it's going to be hard to get it for, um, you know, some events out there, especially early on in events where the enemies maybe don't hit as hard. So you might actually have some trouble getting down to 66% HP. So um, like a lot of people, I don't love the fact that they locked it behind such a restrictive restriction, I guess, right? So that's not awesome. But if you do get this to activate, if you do proc it with uh, 
you know, your HP falling below 66% HP, uh, this is going to be a huge boost. It's going to be a massive, massive boost to attack and defense. And then, of course, getting that additional super attack is is amazing as well, right? So, um, yeah, I don't love it. Obviously, I don't love the fact that there's this HP restriction, but it is a very significant boost uh, with that said. Okay, so from there, we have key plus one up to six and chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, plus 6% up to 66% with each attack performed that might look familiar because it's um identical to you know this right there from the uh pre-easy a details and then uh we also have uh attack plus 10 percent per universe six join forces or pure saiyans category ally on the team and then launches an additional super attack when there is a universe survival saga or pure saiyans category enemy and that also is identical to uh, before the EZA, so essentially the latter half of this new passive is unchanged like this um, This portion right here that is all from the original passive the only new stuff We got was this with the HP restriction, right? And also uh, the additional attack and defense the extra three key and also this additional attack having a high chance of becoming a super attack so is this a good extreme Z awakening? That is the main question that everyone came here to hopefully have answered, right? And of course, I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. I haven't had a chance to test out this unit. All I can say is, or my opinion can only be based off of what I see on paper right now and my initial reaction, right? And I think it's a solid extreme Z awakening. I do. And I think that's going to get some backlash. I think a lot of people are going to be upset because... I think the general sentiment out there right now is that this is a shaft EZA. You know, a lot of people are saying they, they screwed Kaelin Khalifla, they, you know, um, yeah, basically it's a bad EZA, right? And I don't agree with that. I don't, because one thing you gotta keep in mind is that Kaelin Khalifla was already still pretty good without the Extreme Z Awakening. They weren't like some of the like no confess units even some of the uh older lrs that very very badly needed EZAs to even be usable to even be relevant in the current meta uh, i would say kelly khalifla even without the EZA, were still pretty relevant units right so with that in mind they didn't have to give them a crazy boost or anything like that to make them uh even more relevant you know in today's meta right so I think the fact that they got this attack and defense boost is significant. Um, you know, I think that being able to launch another super attack on top of all the super attacks they were already launching is also significant. And then on top of that, if you do get this to proc, if you get this 66% HP restriction um, satisfied or activated, then they're going to be insane. They're going to be absolutely insane with this additional attack and defense less 66%. And another super attack so in theory they're launching uh the initial super obviously and then this additional super that's two this additional super that's three and then two more supers right here that's four and five and then another additional from the hidden potential so they could like in theory launch six super attacks if my calculation is correct i think i think yeah i think so they could launch up to six super attacks and that's just crazy and even if you don't have this part, right, even if you're like, yo, I'm never going to fall below 66% HP, my team's too tanky, whatever, right? Um, that's still five supers. That's still up to five supers. And, I mean, that, I, I think that's pretty good. Now, of course, they don't get any additional uh, defense or attack because LRs don't get stat boosts, right, with these EAs, which is unfortunate, but I guess I kind of get it. Um, so it's not like they're going to be building defense that much quicker or anything like that, but they will still get super tanky in longer events, especially with the additional super attacks. Uh, they're going to be stacking even faster now and, uh, you know, oh my God. Yeah. I don't know if the mic caught that, but there was just some really loud thunder out there. Kind of scared me. I'm not going to lie, but moving on, uh, hopefully the power stays on. Uh, <laughs> I just think it's like a good enough Extreme Z Awakening. Um, I, I don't, I don't think it's, 
yeah, it's, it's not the best EZA we've seen, for sure. And just based on expectations, based on like what people wanted from this EZA, it's not going to satisfy everyone. I understand that. I understand that. But I think it's still going to be a really good unit. I still think they're going to be a really good unit post Extreme Z Awakening. Um, I'm not really that upset with it. Uh, not every new EZA is going to be the best EZA we've ever seen. That's just the fact. So, holy crap. That's loud. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think my overall opinion is that it's solid. It's solid. It's a 7.5 out of 10 EZA. Something like that. And, uh... That's, that's totally fine. <laughs> that's totally fine. I understand if you guys are super upset with the EZA. I understand if you were hoping for more. But I think, um, you know, when it comes to performance, they'll perform just fine. They'll perform just fine. They're not a slot 1 unit by any means. They're, they don't have guard. They don't have damage reduction, anything like that. So um, that's definitely a risk early on in events. But then once you get them to launch, like, a bunch of supers in two appearances or whatever, they're going to be pretty tanky. And of course, by then, they'll have built up their dodge chance to basically be a great chance to dodge, 66%, right? So, um, yeah, with all that said, yo, with all that said, my opinion is, as it stands, man, I think it's a pretty good Extreme Z Awakening. I think it's a pretty solid Extreme Z Awakening, and, um, yeah, that's just how I feel, guys. That's just how I feel. If you're upset with that, if you don't agree, then definitely let me know in the comments why you don't agree and why you think I'm dumb. I can take it, right? So uh, definitely let me know your opinions in the comments down below. And uh, that's it, guys. That's all I got to say. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new. Hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.